All right, so here we are again. Uh, this is Mr. Acosta, the AP over at Long, here with Mr. Raspi again. Hey. Hey, how you doing, nice Paul? You. Nice to see you again. All right, so I just want to follow up from what we um, finished uh, a couple of days ago. And the three action steps that I gave you last time, I want to really praise you on those three action steps because I, I thought at the moment that they were kind of huge. There was a lot of stuff mm -hmm. uh, for you to implement in a couple of days. But let me say this, that when I came to your classroom, I saw you use slant several times, and it really worked like a charm. You noticed that? It's wonderful. How do you feel, how you felt about it? It's just easy. You know, I, I don't want to say that I was against it, but, you know, just implementing it, the, the kids brought it on, I think because a couple other teachers at our school do something very similar, mm -hmm. and they, they like pounding on the desk just they a little like bit, it. and they, they like that anticipation to hear, is anybody, you know, they kind of look yeah. around the room like, is anybody going to mess up? Oh. <laughs> And then, you know, some, some of the kids are already ready to do it again, but a lot of kids are already, you know, they're, they're anticipating, okay, he's doing something important. We need to give him the attention. You know, this this is going to be on the next quiz. We're, you know, we need to know this. Okay. So I'm really, I'm really glad because I, I saw it three or four times during the lesson itself. Mm -hmm. And usually when you get feedback, you expect to see it once and people do it for compliance. They just do it like once. Mm -hmm. But you actually incorporate it into your lesson, and I'm glad that it's really working for you. Then the only thing that really impressed me was I saw you using your online timers. As you notice, and I stayed for the whole lesson, I saw you go from your LO to your DOL throughout mm -hmm. the lesson. You were very uh, intentional about how you were using time. The kids seem to like uh, know what to expect, so it tells me that you used it at least once before you came in here. Mm -hmm. So that was very good as well. And then number three is, I know we worked together on the scripting of the introduction of the lesson and the hook, and you did it exactly the way we scripted out. And you know, how do you feel about the scripting part and when you were delivering the actual lesson itself? Uh, the scripting, yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but you know, the, the delivery was much more smooth. It, the, the flow was a lot cleaner. It wasn't as choppy. You know, it kept me on board. It kept the students on board. Um, just the overall transition from, you know, each area, just from the do now to, you know, the introduction of new material, you know, it's, it's on. It was on point. It wasn't like day one, you know. It's, it wasn't, yeah. yeah I, I know. And, I, and that's where the structure comes in. And now I, as you expand on your own, mm -hmm. take that same concept of scripting, the introduction of the lesson to the guided practice and independent practice at your leisure, because I know it's a lot of scripting. Mm -hmm. But you've seen how it works for introduction. See how you can apply it to other parts of the lesson. Now, that wouldn't be your upgrade this time. We, we will work with that scripting towards the end of the year okay. as we move on, because I don't want to give you away too much. And I just want to work on one thing for uh, between now and next week maybe something to work on during the weekend. And that is that um, as you were teaching, everything was running very smoothly, but I did notice that there was a couple of kids who were struggling. And I think there's one idea that will probably help them is that when you're working on your problems and the, and the TEAK, mm -hmm. is for you to unpack the TEAK in a step-by-step -step manner. And um, have you had experience doing that? Like I've seen some of the other teachers go like, if they're introducing a problem, they go step number one, and they write in their journal, step one, this is what you do, step two, three, four. Because that gives them a framework to refer to when they're doing homework. Absolutely. Um, yeah. um, I, I actually, you know, I, I do something like that with, with area. Um, do you want me to do an example real quick? Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Show, me how, show me how you do it. Cool. Let's so see. first big one that I like to do is identifying the shape. So step one. And this is for area, okay. Yes, just ID or identify the shape. So this is going to be in short form, but, you know, step two, what I usually do is I do ID or identify the formula that we use. Okay, yeah. Number three, big step, is ID the measurements given. So identify, so ID the measurements. There we go. Is that good? Four is going to be plug in, plug in your measurements, plug in your measurements, and solve. And then step five always is to check. So, and that, you know, that overall check is just your check for accuracy. So I can say check for accuracy. And this one is really good. I mean, you can even take this into volume, you know, identifying the shape. Right. Is it a circle? What is the formula? Pi mm -hmm. r squared, identify the measurements. We give exactly. you the circumference, the radius, or the diameter. Plug it in the formula, solve it. Always double check to make sure that you know it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. okay, awesome. So it seems like you're already familiar with how to go about breaking down the standard. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see it this time. We were working on um, probabilities, but try to use this as your model for all of your different um, teaks. Okay. 
and have the kids write the steps on their journal so that when they do homework, they have the steps to refer back to. Because mm -hmm. it may seem like all of them are getting it, but you really need to unpack it in a, in a step by step manner. Okay. So that they can have that framework, particularly the tier three students, where they can refer back to. So every time they do a problem, whenever they do area, they can just come here and look, okay, I did the shape. Oh, it's 2D or 3D, whichever one it is. Mm -hmm. And then which formula am I going to use? So if it's area, then you multiply uh, base by width. Base times height. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or, and then I did the measurements, they look at the numbers, so they look at the numbers here, here, plug into the formula, you know, base times width, and then they get the number they check for accuracy, boom. But they have that framework to go back to. Mm -hmm. So it may seem like all of them are getting it, but you want to make sure that you give them for their journal something they can refer back to all the time. And then, of course, keep this in your an as an anchor chart as well. Okay. That's going to help me a whole lot, too. But I, I'm glad. I mean, you already have the, the unpacking part. You just have to make sure that with every objective, use the same step because that's really going to help, uh, especially the first day that you introduce the content, that's going to help the tier three kids a whole lot. So I guess that the plan would be for your next lesson that you're planning, uh, plan the unpacking this way. I will come and check you um, sometime next week, perhaps Tuesday. I'll come and check it out. And I'm expecting to see you unpack that standard when, when I come in. All right? Awesome. How does that sound? I totally feasible. Mm -hmm. I'm Perfect. glad you already had it for, for area, so that really helps. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Raspi. Well, thank you so much, though. Thank you. All thank right. You, Mr. Appreciate Costa. it. See okay. You soon. All right. Thanks.